All right, um, we're, we're here to tell you about demonstrative pronouns. Um, let's remember that you already have one of these. The one that you know is ekenos, okay? Ekenos, ekene, ekeno. Remember that has the, the omicron ending in the neuter form, okay? Um, that's a pronoun that means that in the plural those, and it can be an adjective as well as a noun. It can mean that person all by itself, or you can use it as an adjective, that book, that house, and so forth, so those people. Um, it's an, a word derived from an adverb, eke, that means there. Um, and, and, uh, and, and we want to consider that this is a, a, this language, ancient Greek, is a language that has not two uh, demonstrative pronouns, like English. In English, we have this and that, and that's all. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the difference between this and that is this is something near, and that is something that's far away. Okay. Um, it's quite quite simple. But um, English uh, English is that way. But Greek is a language like I believe Spanish has mm -hmm. has three demonstrative pronouns, just like Greek. So hada is the and the book doesn't understand this. Okay. So so we're teaching you something that Hansen and Quinn will mess you up on. Um, Let's let's try and make sure that this is simpler and this is what you understand. So there's hada heda tada, which the book translates this, and then there's another word that translates this, um, which is hutas, haute, tuta. Talk to you more about the forms of these words in a second, but let's just talk about the meaning. Okay. Um, so the book translates, uh, and there's the third one, mechanos. Okay. Word that means ekenos, ekene, ekene. So, so the book translates the first two with English word this, and indeed that's the only thing you can do, okay, because we only have two in English. Um, but it doesn't understand the difference between them, and it sometimes tells you to translate a hada, or I can't remember which, or hutas is that. Don't do that. That's not what they mean, <laughs> okay? <laughs> the difference between these three is like the difference between the one, two, and three, those numbers on the left-hand side that Belisi beautifully put in, okay? Um, because hada is the demonstrative pronoun of the first person, the hutas is the demonstrative pronoun of the second person, Belisi, and the kenos is the demonstrative pronoun of you people that are not here, those people, okay? The people who are absent or who are remote, okay? It's, it means, in other words, hada really means this of mine, Utos means this of yours, and Achaos means that of the third person, of his or hers or its, okay? Um, those are the implicit meanings. It's good to know what they are, okay? But you're, you're going to always find that Hada is used of something that, that a speaker is talking about as near to him or herself, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and likewise, Hutos, and there are places in ancient Greek where Hutos just means you there, okay? It's a second person pronoun. Mm -hmm. okay. So it really, really works that way. How does it work in Spanish, please? And um, the words for, for these? First, the first one would be um, este, like este libro. Uh -huh. uh, the second person would be ese, uh -huh. like ese libro, ese, persona, ese uh -huh. persona. And the third one would be aquel, aquel libro, or whatever. Uh -huh. So it sounds percent. similar to yeah. aquel. Yep. Yeah. All right, so so that's the that's the, the way these, these words function, okay? Let's talk about the forms. We should have a new screen. Um, the forms of hada, heda, tada, we can put their, their adjectives, they have three genders, they have singulars and plurals in all of the four cases, hada, heda is the feminine nominative singular, and tada, okay, if you look at these, what the heck are you looking at? Um, what's happened is you have a particle de, okay, it's not the conjunction de, it's the particle de that's actually cognate with the English preposition to, that's pointing at something, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's its whole function in the European languages. So it's an enclitic, if you will. It's a, it's a syllable that becomes one with the with the pronoun part in front of it, which is ha he ta, which sure as heck looks like the article, right? In fact, that's mm -hmm. exactly what it is. It's the article, but you're going to have accents. The only difference between combining the ac article with de and what you get when you when you when you see ha de is that the first person, I mean, the nominative singular masculine and feminine, and the nominative plural masculine. And feminine have accents. So there's an acute accent on hada, an acute accent on heide, there's an acute accent on hoide and haide, okay? But basically it's article plus de. 
as long as you remember that you got accents that are not very singular, uh, masculine and feminine, and not very plural, masculine and feminine. Straightforward. All right, now let's look at hutas. Let's write these down, okay? Um, uh, yeah, maybe you should do another screen, or you want to write them underneath, either way. So let's do nominative singular is masculine is hutas. Nominative singular feminine is haute. Okay, and nominative singular neuter is tuta. Okay, let's write down more of these. Um, there's something familiar going on there. You've got the H in the nominative singular masculine and feminine, and the T in the nominative singular neuter, which is just like ha, he, ta. But that's just because these are pronouns, right? On the same classes. The article that was originally a word that meant this, okay? Um, and, and it got displaced by Hana and has other functions in ancient Greek, and this is a weak demonstrative, if you will. The word for the is also a pointing word, after all, right? But anyhow, let's get back to hutas, haute, tuta. This, the, there's something funny going on here. So let's look at the genitive singular. It's tu, tu, with an acute accent on the U, first U, tu, tu, tau, teis. Okay, we want to do the dative. Okay, tau, teis, for the feminine, and then tu, tu, for the neuter. The, the dative singular is tu to with an omega and I a subscript, tau te with an eta and I a subscript, and tu to again with an omega and I a subscript. The singular uh, is tu ton, yeah, circumflex, and tau tain, okay, and tu to again. So, so it looks as though what we're, we're looking at. If you just looked at this form, you'd say, okay, aside from the H's in the nominative of singular masculine and feminine, it looks like the root for the masculine is two, and the root for the masculine neuter is two, toot, rather, and the root for the feminine is felt, okay? Ha, huh, it doesn't work, okay? So let's look at the neuter for a second, and maybe you can see what the rule is. The neuter plural, Okay, let's just put in the neuter plural underneath the neuter singular. Is tauta, okay, and then it goes tu ton, tu tois, and tauta. Okay, in other words, it reverts to the two forms in the in the neuter. Uh, you have tauta in the neuter nominative and accusative singular, but tu in the in the genitive and the dative plural. So what's going on here? That's not a feminine form, that's a, a nominative singular neuter form. Well, this is a, an example of something that's extremely rare in Greek, but other languages have. It's called vowel harmony, okay? And, and the, the way to express the rule about how you change the stem of hutos, haute, tuto is this, okay? When the ending has an, an omicron, an omega, or an omicron, upsilon in it, the stem is T-O-U-T. When the ending has an alpha or an eta in it, the stem is T A U T, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the trick to learning the forms of hutas haute tuta, and we talk to you about their meanings. Okay, so you really have to learn that ending, and then you figure out the front. Yep. Remember that it's a neuter, so in the neuter singular, the ending is tuta with an O, no nu. Okay. okay. There's there's the trick. Okay.